Rabbi, your other favorite team. Yes, I want to give equal time to hope and the future. You know, I love Baltimore. I love Maryland. Uh, but more than baseball, I love Maryland crabs. And one of my great joys in life from very early age is catching crabs, taking them, throwing them live into a pot of steaming water with some Old Bay and eating them. And there's no greater thrill. And I've never met anybody who said, oh, how cruel it is to throw the crabs live into a pot of stealing water. And in my youth, I used to hunt birds and eat those. I was never one of those people that hunted for sport. I don't see the point of trophies and sawing somebody's head off and sticking it on a wall just for funsies. But I do like the idea of eating what you kill. And I you know, always marvel at Native Americans who thank the great spirit and the animal for giving up its flesh and so forth. And I'm a fan of literature that always recognizes that as a good habit. But um, so many people think hunting is a bad thing and so many people get upset at the idea of eating things that you hunt or just hunting. They don't understand that, as I like to put it, if you had to kill everything that you ate, there'd be a lot more vegetarians in the world. What's your perspective on that? Yeah, I agree with you about trophy hunting. That I have no patience with. Have, there's no argument that will convince me, particularly some of the places now that have fences and the animals were inside a perimeter and you pay a very high fee to hunt some exotic animal that's trapped in an area. I have no patience with that. And I think it does bad things to human beings. You, know, you talked about natives saying the prayer. We do that in Judaism. Our blessings over food are to create humility. By saying some of our blessings, we're acknowledging that this particular animal died so I could eat. And it's not me over them. It's what goes on. It's a, a very different view than trophy hunting, which again, I wanna put that aside. I wanna say that right up front. I wanna hear someone defend trophy hunting and tell me, cause I think it hurts the person as much or more than the animal. I think it reduces human beings and makes them more apt to treat other human beings as trophies. I think it's just an extension of hubris and ego of some individuals of power and control. And I have lots of friends who are hunters and I've never met one of them or heard any of them say, yeah, I want the animal to suffer as much as possible when I kill it. It's always, and there are, there are tests that you have to take in order to make sure that you get it. Many states and countries require clean shots and a certain level of skill in order. And when I fish, I, I always try and, uh, you know, I'm not, I don't go dynamite fishing. I, I, it's a skill and it's me against the fish. And if I catch the fish, I won, I get to eat you. Yeah, when I was younger, living up in New England and spending the summers on the coast, we always went fishing and we brought the fish back, cleaned and ate them. There was no thought of putting them back, throwing them away. It, the goal was it, you're fishing and it's a delicacy or more than, not a delicacy. We ate a lot of flounder. We eat a lot of fish. And I have not seen anyone picketing the fishing boats and protesting catching flounder and eating them. Or I haven't fish and chips. I haven't seen a whole group that's picketing. And that brings up one of my pet peeves, Joe. And it's time for a rant. Okay, Rabbi, rant away. I have yet to see a movement that wants to protect a life that doesn't have fur, doesn't have a cute face, and isn't cuddly. Lobsters are bugs. Crawfish are bugs. Crabs are bugs. And as you mentioned, no one wants, because they're not cute, they don't have fur. If people really are concerned, then you should go after everything. 
instead of picking on only those cute little things, we shouldn't eat cute little things, but we can eat ugly things. Or With big things brown that, eyes. Don't forget big brown eyes. Those yeah, big are brown are very, 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 very important in, in protecting. So I think there's a disingenuousness in the movement that's against hunting and trying to stop hunting. Because if you look at what they're doing, it's not, they're not against hunting. They're just against the cute little animal. And we're human beings. And originally humans hunted. So I think there's something programmed into human beings about hunting for food, preparing the food, and then serving the food. I think that's just part of being human. And we just need to add the, the humility. Well, as I mentioned before, I grew up on a farm and calves, baby calves, yearlings, had the most beautiful brown eyes that you would ever see. And one of my favorite stories is I was taking some people on a tour of a dairy farm and they saw these little cat calves, probably less than two months old. They were the size of small dogs and little children were petting them. And my then fiance asked me, what do you call these, Joe? And I said, you'd rather not know. <laughs> you mean veal. We call veal. them veal because that's what they are. Yeah. yeah. But what is it? At what point does the line get crossed? I decided I didn't mind eating cows the first time one stepped on my foot. And having a 2,000 pound animal step on your foot is a good way to motivate them to. Uh, and uh, you ever tried to catch a live turkey in your arms and take it over to get to the chopping block? You were more than happy to have its head cut off by the time you got it there because it was clawing and flapping like crazy. But some people just don't like the idea, and yet they still go to the grocery store and buy the cellophane wrap packages. You know, I think this goes back to, I don't want to see sausage being made. I don't want to see things happening. I want the end product. There's a kind of deniability. I go to the supermarket, and it's wrapped, and it, it's prepared. It's not not prepared that it's cooked, but it's ready to be cooked. And that gives me deniability. I can pretend that it wasn't a live animal and I can eat it with a clean conscience. If I'm in, in the hunting and I shoot a deer and field strip it, then it's very obvious I just killed something that was alive. And then schlepping the carcass back to the truck and it, then taking it to the butcher you're very much a part of the food chain and you realize this is where our food comes from. But if we wrap it in cellophane, ah, now we have deniability. So what is the solution? Do we, I mean, there is no practical way to make everybody have to hunt what they eat. Right. Uh, so, but there has to be a way to improve people's awareness of where it is that the food that they come from. Should well, McDonald's have pictures on the walls? Well, Costco is helping us because in, the, in, the, in one of the freezer sections, they have lamb. They'll have the leg and the, and the and it's the obvious. Oh, hell out lamb, yeah, I've seen yeah, them. Obvious what you're looking at. So you could see the lamb across the way. What this is, is the summer, I'm bringing one home and cooking it on a spit in my backyard. You'll be able they to hear don't. my wife and daughter yelling from all the way over in Baltimore. <laughs> because you've taken away their deniability and pretending. I think going back to my constant topic about accepting what is in the what's real, we raise animals to eat them. Some people hunt animals to eat. And this is what is. And when we can learn to accept that and not hide behind Whatever pretend we want to pretend isn't happening. I know it's a problem that's eventually going to have to be resolved because the formula of <coughs> land mass and area to how much meat is produced is terribly inefficient and bad for the environment and doesn't address world hunger. We can, draw, we can grow enough wheat to feed everybody, but who wants to live off of wheat uh, and porridge? We, we want our bacon cheeseburgers. 
But that's a topic for another day. I promise I'll work on it if you will too, Rabbi. I know given time, you can solve any problem. And I will. And I just would ask my listeners to have respect for those individuals that hunt and then eat. It's nothing immoral or wrong. It's something you may not do, but don't condemn us. <laughs>